Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Harper, Director of Information Policy Studies at the Cato Institute, a member of the well-represented anti-PDF coalition. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about, about uh, the need for a machine-readable federal government organization chart. I'm going to talk about the quality of information that's available now and the need for abstraction. That's what essentially I'm talking about. Look at any newspaper and turn to the financial section, turn to the weather page, turn even to the sports section, and you'll see lots of facts per square inch represented in charts and, and data like this. A lot of granularity, a lot of detail that Americans can consume. Now turn to the national page, and what do you get? House GOP opts to forego fight on payroll tax plan. What does that mean to the average American? It's opaque, it's obscure, there's a lot of editorial. It's really only available to insiders and to political junkies. The way to fix this problem is abstraction. Now abstraction is considering the general characteristics of things apart from specific instances. It's a powerful tool for comprehending the world. I'm going to take you through it using the example of the dog. Some million years ago, somebody came up with the idea of calling a dog by the name dog. This four-legged furry creature near us, it's a dog. Years later, someone came up with the idea of writing down dog, and we were able to communicate about dog much better. Then just about 100 years ago, Morse code put dog into a special code that could be sent across the country almost instantaneously. And now we have binary. We can represent dog in binary. And now the concept of dog can move around the world. But to have specifics, you need to have ontologies and IDs. So to distinguish for a computer the difference between a greyhound dog and a greyhound bus, you have these things, these organizational charts of all the things that computers want to talk about. Do we have one for the federal government? No. A t uh, an ontology might be agency, bureau, program, and project. We graded last fall the quality of data available about these things in the federal government, and the grades were quite poor. The reason why, and this puts me in the anti-PDF coalition, is because a variety of different sources in the government have different lists of what the agencies, bureaus, programs, and projects are, and all the lists are in PDF, which can't be accessed by a computer. You all know what an organization chart looks like. This is a visual representation of, organi or of an organization chart on the left. On the right is one way of representing an organization chart to computers, and no such thing exists to represent even the basic structure of the federal government. If we had an organization chart, wonderful things would happen. Computer-assisted reporting. You'd be able to do better oversight on the Hill. Financial management would improve. And Americans would be happy. <laughs> There's no guarantee that by creating such a, such a chart, it will immediately and automatically create the transparency that we want. The entire community, not just the government, but the transparency community, many of whom are represented here, Researchers, reporters would all have to develop their literacy with this information, but soon they would. And my prediction is that with a machine-readable federal government organization chart, we would have purple mountains majesty above the fruited plain, a, a thousand flowers blooming, whatever it is you want, we'll get that with a federal government organization chart that machines can read. Thank you. <laughs>